Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the offseason coming off of back to back national championships. And I believe it's what, like 31 wins in a row now? It has been incredible. These first eight years have been quite the journey. And with success comes a lot of different things coming. And one of those things is that your players start to get noticed by the NFL. Now, we do have a lot of seniors leaving, but also we have some juniors, starting with the two safeties, Justin Royal and Ali Myers. They will both declare for the NFL draft. They've had great two seasons, especially Ali Myers. I mean, he came on and he has really took the reins at safety and he has really shown NFL scouts some things. And then David Wyatt really had a boom year. 70 tackles, literally doubling his ta tackle total from last season, tripling his tackle for loss total, and doubling his sack total. I mean, he had a great season overall. And you could just see the seniors leaving. A lot of guys that we had a lot of good battles with, Marquise Dorsey, Coco Bamaye, and also Maurice Highlights Jackson come to mind. But then we look around the NCAA. And Adam Miller gets the head coaching job at Alabama. What an upgrade and what a journey it's been from hit for him from player to coach to failing coach now to Alabama. And our defensive coordinator, Tucker Aconquo, is now the head coach at FAU after they just finished a really good season, only a two-loss season. So he gets his own head coaching job there. Now, the offensive coordinator for Wisconsin goes to Cincinnati. That was Mike Gundy, and he will get the head coaching job, so he goes right back to the head coaching tree as we move into recruiting. Now, we kind of had a, a lot of good recruits during the season, so we don't have too many guys to really go after here in the offseason, but looking at Ilawi Husky, he is a great defensive lineman. We don't really have a solidified uh I guess a fifth lineman on our line right now and a second defensive tackle. So Ilawi Husky will definitely make a big difference. Jalen Waters, another receiver. We're really deep at receiver, but I could use his talent, any type of talent on the offensive end, to be honest, because our season last year was not good. Respect is a pretty good tight end. He's going to come in. It's probably the number two tight end to start out the year. If he does commit, we'll have to see. Aaron Robinson, a really good quarterback. I mean, this guy can actually throw the ball pretty well. He's listed as an athlete, and we're going to put 1,000 points on him. Hopefully, we get him. And then the last guy is Kevin Paris, 2,000 ahead of the last team. So I think we're in good shape going into signing day. And Nicholas Marshall, we're not going to go after him because we're too far behind. He has really good throw accuracy because he would get the walk-on deduction, minus three. So he would come in with 81 throw accuracy. And looking at the bottom of our remaining guys here, Bradley Palmer is a decent tackle. But we'll have to see who we end up with. So he advanced to signing day. And Ilawi Husky, he commits to Appalachian State. We lose out by 475 points. We put a lot of points on him. How did we not get him? And then Jalen Waters, he goes to Marquette, a rival. So we miss out on our top two recruits. But Respect does commit. And look at this. He barely commits to us. We barely beat out Purdue, who's definitely taken away some of our recruits here in this dynasty. And then Aaron Robinson, he also commits to Western Kentucky. We were ahead by over 1,000 with him. And he somehow ends up with Western Kentucky. Nicholas Marshall does commit to Minnesota. That was expected. We didn't put any points on him. And we do end up with Kevin Paris. So, wow. I mean, this is a shock. I did not expect to have that bad of an offseason recruit. And now let's just look at the top classes to see how we lined up. So we end up with the number 34 ranked class. That's not too bad. 16 total recruits. Our top guy is Dominic Holly, who will be renamed, and so will Bennett because they are walk-ons. I will rename them to preferred walk-ons. And then looking at the rest of our guys, we had a pretty good recruiting class. Uh, you know, one guy that's really going to make a difference, like I said, is respect because we don't have many tight ends on the roster. In fact, I think we only have he, him now and Ramel Williams. So that is pretty surprising because we don't have any tight ends really that – can really battle him in practice 
So let's look at the other classes here. Marquette ends up at 26 in Alabama, now coached by Adam Miller is now at 29. Remember, they have fallen off a little bit because after a while, Alabama does kind of do the fall off in every dynasty. But for the first like six years, they were competitive. Wisconsin though, they actually fall way off 84 in ranking there. That is bad for them. So let's move on to training. And this is where our players get better in the off season. And let's just look at our quarterbacks and running backs and really, just constant, you know, pretty much steady production out of these guys in training. I mean, nobody's really separating themselves from the pack. I mentioned that Apollo St. Vincent had a good year, but he didn't really wow me. But he is going to be still the starter come next season. Julian Gonzalez will sit behind him. I will also rotate some of these receivers in at running back as well. And including guys like Marquise Moore, who shows that he can play every single position on the field let's just look at all these guys jasper sweet goes up and he is looking pretty good this season his route running is only at 69 that's definitely something that we have to watch out for because when we play these top defenses he's not going to separate in man coverage except using his speed now he is at 98 speed that is amazing and then looking at everybody else i gotta say that trayvon white had a good off season and so did michael bradbury i am surprised to see that kind of progression out of him he will come into this season as the highest rated receiver. He will be on the outside. I am pleasantly surprised by that. I mentioned that Ramel Williams is our only tight end on the board on our roster right now, along with respect now. He goes up a little bit. And then looking at our offensive line, I just like to see steady progression out of all of them just going up. And look at Sam Price. He is now at 95 overall, our best offensive lineman and the best overall guy on the team right now. Now, let's look at defense. Aurelio Villain goes up quite a bit. I'm looking for that year or two leap from him. He definitely started out fast and kind of slowed down, but he still did his part. Anderson Reed going into his senior year. I am looking forward to playing with him this season. We will be having another tough schedule, so we will need the defensive line to step up. He looks really good. Frankie Kai going into his junior year. A big year like kind of like Justin Royal and Ali Myers had, and he could declare early. You never know. He looks pretty good. He had a pretty good offseason training, and he will be obviously the starter. Now, linebacker is going to be interesting. Bobo Smith is our highest rated left outside linebacker. He is more of an athletic guy. He's at 89 speed. So it's going to be interesting playing with a guy that kind of has a higher ceiling. But right now, he doesn't have good technique. You can see his pursuit is up there, 92 but I'm going to need him in pass rushing situations and look at his pass rushing, rushing skills. Finesse moves and power moves both lower than 65. That's definitely going to meet, need to be worked on. Now, Tamari Jamison will be the starter at middle linebacker again. He goes up to about 81 overall with Denzel Graham backing him up. I'm excited for him and Adam Williams. I think that Adam Williams is poised for a huge season. He had a really good year last year, but now I think he could solidify himself as the best linebacker in the country as Tamari Jamison won that last year. But I think that Adam Williams has a chance to sweep all defensive uh, awards across the NCAA. Now, our secondary is where we could struggle out of the gate. Now, Charles Davis is an older veteran on the squad here, but he hasn't had the experience. He has 99 pursuit. I mean, he is amazing. He actually has the highest man coverage as well at 93 and 82 zone, which nets him at second highest. So I'm definitely going to be, be depending on the guys backing him up because I don't know how Charles Davis is going to do in his first season starting. Now, Barry Willis is going to be really good on the outside. He has the highest play recognition out of all the cornerbacks at 81. So I'm I'm going to be – it's going to not be a revolving door, but I'm going to have my open mind here at – especially in the secondary because I don't know how these guys are going to do on their in their first year starting in the secondary. Now let's talk about safeties because two new safeties now. Ja'Kai Betts is going to be the starting strong safety. He is the de facto guy there. At free safety, we'll have to take another look at that a little later because there's going to be a couple of freshmen. Marlon Yarbrough will still play in the slot. I really love him there, and we'll see how that goes. So looking at the changes in the Big Ten, Army and Wisconsin both get promoted as Pittsburgh and Cincinnati get demoted. 
So let's hop into our schedule. We will open up the season versus Alabama and then FAU. So we will play our former offensive and defensive coordinators back to back. Alabama will be a home game. FAU will be the first ever neutral site game for the Knight Whitetails. Then we will go on and on the road and play probably the best quarterback in the nation in Davis Webb. And he is the reason why uh, Adam Miller got promoted, really. I mean, not maybe the sole reason, but a big reason. And then we open up Big Ten play versus a lot of tough opponents. Michigan State has a really good quarterback this year. We'll have to check him out when we play him. Michigan does as well. This is a very quarterback-driven conference right now, except Wisconsin. Wisconsin does not have a really good quarterback. Everybody else has a very dominant quarterback. So it's going to be tough for our young secondary to re really battle these guys. So let's look at the preferred walk-ons, which I did not cover earlier. We will get to them now. Let's start with free safety, and that's why I mentioned there's going to be a competition at free safety. Quashawn DeKingo is going to be a really good guy to develop here in the secondary, and he's an athletic safety. We haven't had a really good athlete at safety. I think that Deshaun DeKingo can be that. Quashawn DeKingo can be that guy, and just looking at his ratings here, he has a lesser rating of Pursuit, 80, compared to Will Coax, the true freshman who has 90 Pursuit. Their play recognition are both low, so I don't know who's really going to take over at the starting spot right now. Right now, Will Coax is penciled in there, but we'll have to see how that goes. Now, let's talk about two preferred walk-on cornerbacks who will get redshirted. Joe, Joe Brahman and then Braxton, Jeremy Braxton. They're both freshmen. They will both probably get redshirted. They both do two things differently. One's good at man, one's good at zone. I think that a year or two of development and they can be really good. Braxton, on the other hand, has the highest play recognition of any cornerback right now. I'm going to have to use that in the future. Now let's move to the offensive side of the ball. Now, this is going to be the guy that's replacing Dominic Holly. This is Blake Wright. He is six foot four, 210 pounds. He is a big body receiver. He will play year one. That is no doubt because of the size, and it definitely gives us a different element on the outside. And he is still 79 overall, even after getting the minus three point deduction for his attributes because of the preferred walk on deduction. I think he is going to be special right away in this offense. And then Harrison O'Toole. We talked about that second defensive tackle. We have the nose tackle and Kai. We need a guy next to him who's going to kind of play a three technique. Harrison O'Toole is six foot seven, and he is a man, and I am excited for him. So let's just hop into a little bit of practice here because we have the new freshman quarterback, Colin Kurtz, on the field. Now, I wanted to just talk about quarterback really quick. I did not cover him much so far in this video, but it's because I am going with Colin Kurtz. And the reason is because I just need a different type of dynamic weapon in this offense, and I think that it starts with the quarterback. Colin Kurtz is mobile. He can also throw the ball with a lot more arm power than Deshaun Wilson could. Obviously, Jabari, Wilson, Jabari Hollywood is going to be the third stringer this year. And Kurtz, he can air it out. Here's a deep shot to Blake Wright, the big receiver, the freshman. And maybe this is a future connection we will see. Blake Wright goes up and gets it, freshman to freshman. And I am looking forward to seeing that in this offense, especially with this new freshman quarterback. Like I said, he's got an arm, and that's what separates him from Deshaun Wilson. I kind of think that Deshaun Wilson is – just a game manager. I mean, you saw that in the national championship. He couldn't really air the ball out down the field with consistency. And I think that Colin Kurtz could add that to our offense. And I think that, you know, just getting another guy out there that can throw the ball similar to what DiRoberto could do. I don't know if he has that potential, but he definitely has the expectation out there. Here's another deep shot to Blake Wright in one-on-one, -on -one, and he almost goes up and gets it. But it's knocked away by Charles Davis, who I mentioned is going to be the de facto starter on the left side. And I am really nervous. I can't lie. I am nervous for our secondary this year because we play a ton of good quarterbacks. Here's another deep shot across the middle. And that was Blake Wright going up and getting it. 
And there we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's why this guy is going to get playing time because he can go up and get it in one-on-one -on -one coverage. I am looking forward to seeing that. And like I said, he's going to play on the outside more than likely. And I don't know if he's going to be penciled in as the number one, but I really just love his potential. There he is going down and getting a pass on that one. And I just love seeing this freshman quarterback throw the ball. You can see a lot of these throws are really, really good. I mean, this is impressive to see it in his first ever practice. There's Jasper Sweet, who's going to play in the slot quite a bit. And here's a throw to left side. There's Michael Bradbury, who gets past uh, Barry Willis on the outside. And that is going to be, like I said, something that is going to be nerve-wracking this year. Another deep shot to Blake Wright, and it's going to be knocked away by the freshman Will Copes. I mean, we have a lot of freshmen this year, a lot of impact guys that are going to be new starters. This is going to be a different-looking team. I think the positions that are pretty much going to be the same, Ramel Williams at tight end and then Apollo St. Vincent at running back. Besides that, I mean, you're going to see a lot of different guys shuffled in and out of the lineup on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. And then Adam Williams, obviously, is still a starter. Tamari Jamison as well and Frankie Kai and Anderson Reed. Those guys will all return as big-time veteran starters. But then we see some new faces, like who just caught the ball. That's Delroy King, number 88. He will play a little bit of running back, which we will see later in this practice. And I just want to show you guys some of the throws that this guy, Colin Kurtz, is making. I mean, this guy is making all the throws. He's a throw to Blake Wright on the outside and beating Barry Willis there in press. And that's the thing. If he has a smaller corner matched up against him he's gonna release and beat that press every single time and that's something that I'm looking forward to I'm gonna be paying attention to those matchups where he does have smaller corners on him and I'm definitely going to abuse that and really just take advantage of those opportunities now let's talk about our running game I think it's gonna pretty much be the same as far as the running backs go but like I said, I'm going to throw in packages where I see Delroy King in there, where I see Marquise Moore in there. And here is, uh, you know, kind of a package that I'm going to have out a lot, and it's going to be that kind of dual running back package. And you will see that quite a bit as well, as Apollo St. Vincent is going to be kind of our workhorse. As now you get to see a different package. Here's Marquise Moore, and for his package, he's going to have a package in in this playbook, and look at him getting a handoff, and he will take it to distance, and that one is going to be a touchdown, and that's what I'm talking about. That is the best play of practice right here, and the blocking was perfect. I think our offensive line is going to be pretty good this year, especially with a guy that can air the ball out with quarterback. He's going to make a lot of smarter throws. And here's Delroy King in at running back. He's going to be a guy that's going to play in the slot also. But you can see he is the most elusive receiver. You can see him bouncing off of the first tackle on a lot of these plays. And he's going to be pretty good. I am excited for another dynamic guy who can play both receiver and running back. He definitely has the tools to play both. Also, he has 99 acceleration, which will help when getting open and creating separation. So let's get to the red shirts this year. And one thing that I did notice this season is that I didn't have a ton of red shirts. And looking at Blake Wright, he's not going to get redshirted, but J.D. Townsend, who did commit one of our first receivers to commit earlier in the year, he will get redshirted. I think he is going to be kind of a future receiver on this receiving core. We are deep at receiver right now, and it could eventually kind of rear its head because guys could transfer if they don't get the playing time. And then looking at uh, right guard, Matty Pitt will get the red shirt. Grady Boozer, those guys along with uh, Brandon right here, they will get the red shirt on the defensive line. And then a couple of guys here on our defensive line that will get a red shirt, Aaron Morgan and Lewis, they will both get red shirted there as I will pass them up right now. And then at middle linebacker, Clinton Jacobs is the future at linebacker for us. But right now it's not his turn to play. I think it's just worth redshirting him right now and then Noah Herndon another athletic linebacker he will get redshirted as well and then Braxton and Brahman will get the red shirts and I don't think I'm going to redshirt any of the freshman safeties here because like I said they will both battle for playing time and honestly they might even both play maybe even on the field at the same time you never know 
So that will do it here in the off season. I am excited for season nine. This series isn't going anywhere. I know you guys have been asking if I'm ending this series. It's not ending. It's not even close, to be honest. I don't see the end in sight unless we just win every single national championship for the coming years, which I don't see happening. Uh, you know, I am just excited for this season coming up, season nine. So you don't want to miss any of that. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope.